as always. She raises her voice in the markets. She calls out at the head of the noisy streets where large crowds gather. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks her words. How long, O oh naive ones, you who are easily misled, will you love being simple-minded and undiscerning? How long will scoffers, I will make my words known to you. Spirit's telling me leave it at that. Okay. Use what the enemy left behind. The Spirit has always taught me that. So I returned to my little church last Sunday, and I love my little church. To me, it's like this treasure that I've cultivated and taught. I've given it a lot of attention. I walk in, they know me. There's an expression of fear and excitement in their eyes. Mostly anybody that knows me is always like, well, what is gonna happen now? <laughs> What is going to happen? So I was deciding reward number two for my bride. Every moment you have served me, I am now, at this moment, as you well know, this is a blessing. Just trust me. I know many have questions. I'm explaining it. I am now Delivering you right to your heaven. So don't worry about the enemy. Don't worry about taking territory. I'm going to have it laid right at your feet. Don't worry about struggling. If you have served me the last seven years... Just to give you an idea, parameters as far as something your mind can grasp. The next seven years and for eternity, as I promised you, I'm serving you. As you should be served. I'm going to lay it at your pretty little feet. One of my favorite expressions because beautiful are the mountains of the feet of God's messengers. So I'm also gonna explain things a lot more succinctly and easier to understand. And I'll keep my original style as well. So that's happening. I am also returning to my original policy, <clears throat> which is, if you come to me, I will help you. It will require repentance. It will require you trying to follow my laws. The Holy Spirit, it will require effort. And I will help you. But I am not going to go on any more missions searching for lost sheep. You know where the buildings are. You have YouTube. You have scripture. It is your right to destroy yourself.
but I will not allow you to destroy others and influence others. Think very carefully about your life. Choose life. So as always, I'm going to take this to uh, the heavenly realms because I decided to take the battle into the air where the enemy has no choice or chance because the battle's already won. So why is there sin? <clears throat> sin equals death spiritually. Scripture talks about two different types of death. Now last week I was in the scripture and Jesus is talking about the last day and the good that were dead will be raised. That's happening as we speak. I launched my alert five there and there. So why is there sin? I'm going to tell you a story. So last week, third encounter, normally people get three personal visits from me. I give them three chances. So third encounter, pastor's daughter, Hebrew, definitely one of mine. So I'm required, but it is my delight and privilege to serve her and make sure she's taken care of. So I did that, and we were playing. And the spirit turned it into the Garden of Eden real quick. It's because God's glory and light is so overwhelming. You can't really um, focus at times. You just get taken and lost in the spirit and then you're pretty much gone. It's just spirit to spirit. And the understanding that happens, the comprehension needed, has to come from the Holy Spirit. But it is human nature to doubt, and it is human nature to want to figure things out. And it is more human nature to not want to be hurt. And I was praying on this like I pray on everything. You never know with God. God always surprises you. And surprise in itself is an aspect of life and living that humans love and God loves. So this recent blessing you received you know it's from God because many of us are like, as soon as 2020 started, wham, this huge blessing dropped right into our lap. I can promise you, it is more than you imagine. Better than anything you could have ever come up with on your own. Created just for you. Choice. Why is there sin? There was this book I read. This is going to get a little, 
I'm gonna say consistent. <laughs> Basically, it's a situation where the husband feels more like he kidnapped his wife than his wife choosing him. But he also realizes that's not love. She has to have the choice. It is not necessarily that he wants her to choose him. It's he wants her to explore life. He wants her to be able to make her own choices and learn. He wants her to be the best her she can be. So before he even meets her, he allows her to learn. And he looks at her as this precious, amazing creation. And he sees the world through her eyes, not just his. Now, sin means miss the mark. It's that simple. Sin is disobeying God. For the wages of sin is death. I'm not going to go against scripture. That will happen. <clears throat> Spiritual death will happen if you want that. That is your way out. Because the world never agreed to marry me. The world never had a covenant with me. Mercies are innumerable because that's just who I am. I love. But I have a relationship with my bride as her covering and as her husband. And I am the best husband imaginable. That is what I strive for. The best father possible. That is what I strive for. So without the ability to disobey God, you would feel trapped. And that is not love. We obey God because we trust God and because we honor God and because we love God. That is God's love language. It is in scripture. If you love me, obey me. <clears throat> so I realized long before creation there had to be darkness. Scripture says God created light and darkness.
Now, I am consistent. Humanity's happiness depends on me never changing. You know exactly what you get from me. That is your comfort zone. You can go to scripture. This is what I'm going to do. This is who I am. As you can see, new bedspread. Now I'm going to get into two types of teachings. One, for those born of the Spirit. And two, for those born of the Spirit, but struggling. Because as I stated, I am able to discern the times, and I know, because I have video of it, I woke some people up. Now, let the Holy Spirit lead you to whatever video you need. Your answer is there. I speak your love language. It's effort beyond your imagination. <laughs> For you. You have desires. You want to do whatever you want to do. What child doesn't? But things occur and there are impacts to your heart, to your thoughts, and to your life when you do something. Those things can make you happy or those things can hurt you. When hurting yourself becomes a way of life, are you then happy? When you are numb to the pain, are you still in pain? When you are barely existing, is that life? So many of you woke up <clears throat> and you're in a flat spin. Spiraling down. And you've been that way for a while. You were always awake. You just weren't able to hear my voice. And then you say, that's not true. And I say, exactly. what I meant by that, a lot of times you weren't able to discern my voice from your heart and your desires.
because many people that I sit down with, the pastor's daughter included, brilliant. You're supposed to be able to do seven things at once. Your mind is supposed to move back quickly. You were made in God's image. You are supposed to understand things like that. Come to one conclusion, not even finish that because you came to that conclusion and be moving on to a whole different subject. You're supposed to be able to have a conversation like that. Where you're messing up is you're using substances to try and slow down your mind when what you need to do is embrace it because it's scripture. I'm here with my angels. Scripture says the Holy Spirit gives you a sound mind. Because when you introduce substances, you're introducing darkness. And you're this little tiny bit of light. And most of you are camped out right with the enemy around you. Now, in 2014, I was taken into the air. I like it up here. So will you. God looks at the heart. Beloveds, I cannot impress this upon you enough. Enough, enough. I judge the spirit. The heart pumps blood. In scripture, the heart is your spirit. Your spirit gives your mind ideas. What is evil, we would have no definition of what is evil without scripture. The scripture says it's evil, and it's evil. That's it. There is no debate. The scripture existed long before creation. Beloved. The scripture is why there is creation. My alert five and my bride, we're going to help the lukewarm. We are one nation. I am a Nazarene. The way. When I talk about the walk, the walk is the way. The walk is inside Christianity, therefore, it is the way. It will return to the way. It will return to what I said. Go out and make disciples, teaching them all that I have commanded you. I did not say suggest it. I did not say this is my idea. I said, I command you, be strong and courageous. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. My alert five, my bride, you know this to be true all of your life. You were chosen. And prepared.
we are already fearless because of what we've been through. So this is going to be a walk in the park. Do not expect me to ignore a command I gave you if you have not completed what I told you to do. Don't expect that. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what makes me me. And I realized <clears throat> fear has paralyzed many. Because there's lukewarm that is apathetic, and there's lukewarm that is more like Cooper from that movie. Yeah, at times it is scary to follow Jesus. I've been there. That's the walk. It builds your faith. Without the walk, your faith will die. We are in the darkest times humanity ever faced or will ever face. And I'm not going to lower my standards. What I'm going to do instead I'm going to teach you how to dogfight. Now, many know me, <clears throat> especially my Alert 5. I speak to you intimately. If you're about to walk into something, I'm sitting there on top of you. Get on that bus right now. If you don't get on that bus right now, that one, get on that bus. There's a reason I speak to you like that. People are like, that has happened. Well, because I love you. Beloveds, in the air, we don't let life distract us from God. We let God return us to life. You were created and designed to be in constant fellowship with God. Being taken into the air. The words originally written basically said you would have no choice and you would be seized. That has occurred. To protect you. If you're crying in a playpen because you're getting beat up. Even though you want to stay there, a good father is just going to look at you and just pick you up and pull you out of the playpen. Darkness is the enemy. darkness comes from a different type of spirit. So we will define darkness so we know what we're fighting. There are my angels, because the scripture said everlasting life. If 
It's been 2,000 years. We were the kings and the queens. And you say, Lord, I don't feel like being a king. Lord, I don't feel like being a queen. I'm going to tell you what the spirit tells me. Suck it up, buttercup. That's what the world needs. That's what your household needs. That's what your true friends need. I noticed um, yesterday I was not scheduled to work today. And the Spirit said, there's a reason for that. All right. I was given the option to work today. Would have increased my paycheck. I'd be in my city. I love my city. My city. My city is pretty awesome. Uh, my city is adorned for me. I love my city. And the Spirit told me there's a reason. I don't want you to go to work today. So here I am making this video for you because I know someone needs to hear it. And what I've always preached and taught. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not anybody else's. Not anything else's. His righteousness. In short, you take care of my business, I will always take care of yours. My business is people. My funds are lacking. Now, the reason I have a new bedspread, everywhere you go, your clothes, if you're given hand-me-downs, if someone provides for you, which is me, so I clothe you, I give you some things, that's a temporary thing to get you by. Those clothes still hold the residue of darkness. If someone was depressed that wore them, if someone was doing things that caused them to get depressed, or angry, or hurt, all of that sticks to the clothing and objects around you. So if you're trying to kick a habit, step by step with the Holy Spirit, you need to start throwing some things out. You need to have a place to rest where it is only the Holy Spirit and you. Objects hold no value. I told you that a long time ago. Do not value possessions. Let things go. I'll give you something better. If you're an angel, this is going to impact you strongly. If you're born of the spirit, it will still impact you. And you are an angel. Otherwise, you wouldn't be born of the Spirit. You need to look at yourself as warriors. And your fight is to keep your peace and joy and accomplish your missions. I'll take care of the rest. Because the cravings for things remains on those clothes. 
remains on a bedspread. It remains on things. I recognize the jump from a certain lifestyle straight into another lifestyle can't happen without you being a new creation and your cravings removed. You also need to learn how to not talk to certain people. You need to learn how to say no. And you need to be led by the Spirit because you don't know who you're going to interact with that day. God does. So a lot of times, I'll take you on a different path so that you avoid people. Or you see a confirmation that I put in your path. Or a gift or a blessing letting you know, yep, I'm right here walking with you. It's as simple as that. You have to learn to be led by the Spirit. Now anyone that knows me knows I love to party. I see no reason not to celebrate God's goodness and be with my people. I love to be with my people. But I also always know when it's time to get back to work. We celebrate people we've helped, people we've healed. We celebrate God's victories. We are commanded to. So that we remember, God did this for us. In my mind, I don't see how that is not irresistible. We utilize what the enemy left behind. It wasn't like I was sitting up there the entire time like, oh, this isn't good. I was sitting there like, nah, keep doing that. And greed, greed will work. Since you have greed, that'll make you get it done faster. <clears throat> I can use that. I, I can't wait to use that. The scripture says, behold, I send you out as sheep among the wolves. He is wise as serpents but as gentle as doves. A soft word turns away wrath. Don't engage. Now, when you engage, <coughs> you're not engaging to win. You're engaging to deliver the words God has given you for the situation. You have to always have your military bearing. Meaning you can't flip out. You have to be focused and not break under pressure. My alert five We've been through so much that it hardly phases us. My bride, same thing. We do everything in steps. There's a season for this, a time for this. Right now is a time 
to become a nation. Gathering together in a building is a good thing. But it's also not going to be something someone wants to do if their spirit is telling them there's more. And I don't believe everything that is being said here. So their spirit is not going to feel like it needs to learn anything. It's going to feel like you guys are the ones that need to learn. And this is the freedom from sin that I wanted people to have is simply the lack of guilt for living. The Holy Spirit told you it's okay, then it's okay. That's between you and God. Because God is right there with you, loving every moment of teaching you and being with you. Building your life with you. Helping you avoid the pitfalls that others fall into. So you have to cultivate your light. Your routine is what's destroying you. So you have to change your routine. How do you cultivate your light? First thing you do, open up your Bible. The scripture says, if you seek me, you will find me. You are seeking God. That is letting God know he is on your mind. Do you want to be in love with Jesus is the first question you have to ask yourself. Because I guarantee you will fall in love. Be in love with someone that won't hurt you. And has proved it. So the Spirit of God is in the Scripture. That impacts your spirit. Now, light is coming in. You need as much light as possible so that you don't become the darkness. What is darkness? Feeling anxiety, depression, anger, hurt, fear, all of the things that debilitate your spirit, that keep you from being you. Because if you have a feeling that you are not living the way God wants you to, the way you want to, and you're in a flat spin, that's how you pull yourself out of it. If you don't, the ground is right there. God sees who someone really is, even if it's three years down the road, three months down the road, three days down the road. All God wants you to do, try. I'll do the rest. There are
are so many programs, options available that if you're in a flat spin, the doors that can be open are there. And you need to learn to set God up for success. That is one of the most frustrating things. I know how to create doors, get them open. You set me up for success, I will perform miracles. You make it hard, you're making it hard for yourself. It'll take, normally when I step into a situation, I've already got everything lined up for you anyway, or I wouldn't have woken you up. <clears throat> and then I'm like, get over there. Go through this door I just opened for you. So you can see that I'm good. And I'm also moving things into place while I'm doing that. I'm always doing something. Second thing. If you are destroying yourself, learn to fight yourself. You will always have a desire from your spirit. And you will have a desire from my spirit. Let my spirit win. It's going to anyway. You might want to listen to a certain song. My spirit tells you no. Listen to this song. You have to have your light at full level. And then you can dabble in whatever you want to dabble in. But you have to reverse that formula. You can't be full of darkness with a little bit of light. First, get your light up. The quickest, most efficient way, follow the Holy Spirit, because then you are entering rest. That's where you'll find your peace and your joy. Keeping your military bearing will be much, much easier. Because the Spirit gives you long-suffering, patience, strength, power. Kindness, gentleness, the person you really want to be. You see a movie, you hear a song. It resonates with you and you're like, I want to be the hero. I want to be that. Those are your role models. It looks fun. Until you live that life. Then you want out. Different levels to the game, dear ones. Different levels to the game. Wide is the path that leads to destruction. Narrow is the path that leads to life. And few will find it. I'll never make it more complicated than that. It's always been between me and you. Did you obey me? This is always for you. Alright. I love you.